Down, downward dog. Kind of embarrassed to show you my farm this this week. I feel like I turned around and um, the weeds have gone berserko. I think all the rain and the sun, and I knew they were growing, but it's like it's like a carpet. I have these last two rows, so I, I normally love weeding. I I don't love whatever this um, grass is that. Um, is growing uh, in my bed is is awful um, so it's, I can't just pull it out I've resorted to some old sharp knife I found in in the barn um, I also bought two other weeding tools but they're great and they're great for when I should have weeded these rows which was like three weeks ago when you can just like scrape the dirt and the weeds are really tiny and you just scuffle it and they die in the sun um, so our goal this week, I actually have my two daughters helping me this week, thank goodness, and we're just gonna try and weed as much as possible so that we can get back to that easy point of weeding and stay on top of this. But the problem here too is the Lysianthus are very tiny still. They're super small, so I almost sometimes have to dig around to find them. Yes, I, I thought I'd get this weeded today, but it looks like I'm gonna have to continue this tomorrow. Um, yeah. So um, welcome, welcome to the barn. Uh, this is where um, I process my flowers. I have a cooler here and um, another small cooler there. So I actually have two, which has been great because today I am processing my um, peonies and I originally had them in this cooler and then the air conditioner wasn't, it's, it's an air conditioner hooked up to a, a it's a thing called a cool bot, which makes your air conditioner go colder than it normally would on the regular settings. Anyways, it was not keeping the cooler. I want to set it to like two degrees and it was Celsius um, and it was going up to six and seven, which you can't store peonies that warm. So then I flipped everything to my second cooler. And then um, in the heat wave last week, I went in there and I noticed it had climbed up to five. This one's not as insulated as well. So normally I only use that for middle of the week and I keep it warmer for the flowers that like it not so cold. And I don't normally keep this at two, just when I'm storing um, my peonies. Um, and I saved some peonies. So I, these were all cut a, a few weeks ago, three weeks ago, I think. Um, I saved them because I knew I would have a lull in um, blooms. It naturally, it's just this is a low spot for if you're growing all seasonal flowers in a field. Um, it's, there's just, you're done with the early spring blooms and the full on summer blooms haven't started yet. So you need a lot of perennials and um, yeah, there's things you can do, but I have a lull and especially a lull because I do not have my snapdragons, which normally I would have lots of snapdragons and then I can fill my, at least my farmer's market booth with that. So I cut these um, quite tight. You have to know your variety. Not all peonies you can cut this tight, but the ones that I know I can store well, I cut tight and then I store them cold. And then uh, when I need them, I just um, snip the ends, rehydrate, and I can use them in my bouquets. 
which will be great because I need more flowers to go with the filler stuff I cut this morning um, from the field and what's in the cooler to make my market bouquets. And I saved a, a crate of the red charm, which was actually my first peony blooming. But I was like, oh, it'd be fun to have a couple buckets of red bouquets because I'm in Canada and it's Canada Day, uh, I think on Monday. But if you're having a Canada Day party, you would have it this weekend. So I thought, well, oh, I'll save one crate so we can do that. So I thought I'd take you here. This was kind of my uh, goal this week was to get the Lysianthus weeded up there and also run through and clean up my perennial bed here. This is about half of my perennials and I have more over there. But I think in the future I want to make this all perennials because then I'll be driving by, walking by it daily and hopefully that will make me stay on top of the weeds because the weeds, they come on, they look very innocent and then they go bonkers. Um, and once they're too big, it's a real headache. So I really don't want to let this happen again next year. But yeah, so welcome to the perennials. These are the, um, some that I planted three years ago, two years ago, and then we put some more in this spring. Um, this bed used to be a hundred feet long. Um, when we moved onto this section of the farm, I just didn't realize this back 50 feet was like crazy wet. And the ends of the rows are water like you can see it today because we just got an inch of rain it's just way too wet um, it doesn't drain well here just a kind of a low spot of our field so i don't put any valuable perennials at the end of these rows these are all uh, perennials that i can reseed again that don't cost me a ton of money so i have um, mint at the end i just added on fever view to two of the rows and i did put in <laughs> Um, I did put in Baptisia because in my mind I just really want a full row of Baptisia. So it's a little bit of a gamble to see that if it survives um, through the wet, especially the spring and the fall when it's really wet in here. Um, this row here um, is almost all the ladies mantle that we moved, that we, that I moved. Um, I don't know if you remember, it was really hard to move from out of that hard ground over there. Um, so I didn't get it all moved, but it actually looks quite full. I didn't cut it all either because the stems were crazy short this year. Um, so I think though next year, if I can keep it weeded, I think it's good to go and we should have plenty of ladies mantle in the spring. And at the very front of the row was the newest stilby I bought. I'm still not 100% sure I love a stilby. Um, but I'm giving it another go here. And then beside it was the, um, the row of alium um, that was so nice and green when we were weeding here in April. Um, I don't weed my alium because it's, it blooms and it dies back quite quickly. So I'm just waiting on a few of the drumstick alium at the end here. And then I'm gonna pull this tarp and cover the row and kill off any weeds that were growing there. So I did mow down the front half and then I should be able to cut that this week and then this will all get tarped and clean it up there. Um, and then the next row is um, where I put all the flocks that I'm trying. Again, so I didn't put flocks right to the end because it's way too wet here. So I just put in some more feverfew because you know, you can never have enough feverfew. Um, but the flocks is doing pretty good. It's um, it seems to mainly, I think most of them took. Okay, and this, this was, there was just this odd yarrow plant that receded in here, but this was actually Sweet William that I wanted to cut this year. Um, I, it, I knew it wasn't doing well. I wasn't gonna cut off of it. Uh, so I didn't actually spend time weeding it. I just let it get a bit bigger and I mowed it now before anything went to seed. I did this last year too, and surprisingly the Sweet William did, like it didn't die back and it just kept growing. And then when we have a chance in hopefully the next month, I will come in and try and weed this bit better, maybe top up with some compost, but um, I'm pretty sure I'll have Sweet William here for next year. 
And then the following row was lilies at the front, yarrow in the middle, and then mint at this end. But I just couldn't get some of the perennial weeds out of there. Last year I did okay, but this year I thought, I just don't have time. Um, the dogs are kind of making a mess of the tarp, but I'm just gonna keep this tarp this year. And um, then hopefully we have a fresh row to plant some perennials in the top two thirds. And then it's so wet at this end here, but um, this is my row of mint. I love mint. So at the front was the mint, the um, mountain mint I bought in as little baby cute plugs. Uh, and then it's the mountain mint that I seeded, that I got the seed from uh, Richter's. So it's slightly different um, mint. And then the back half is just, this is mint that um, came over from across the row. But I also have trays of it seeded that I'm going to um, fill in the holes here. So this will be a full row of mint for uh, next year and the rest of this year. This is my row. Um, the front is, um, I planted this last year. So the front is a stilby um, that I'm experimenting to see whether I like. And this was my phlox. So uh, this row here, again, I put um, feverfew at the front because that's it's actually really wet in this corner. Um, and then this is probably one of my favorite perennials. It's the Fama scabiosa. So it's one that you can seed yourself. Um, so you don't have to buy it in. And I might even put some more in. I just love it. Um, I have to look up what the super tall, tall one is. Uh, if I remember, I'll put it on the screen. Um, I, what, what, I don't mind it as a cut. Um, I just don't visually like how tall it is compared to the rest, so it, it bothers me. If I had a whole row of it, uh, then it wouldn't bother me as much. But, and then um, the front is the perennial anemones, which I've had no success with. Uh, there's a few that are still there. I actually bought in more, but I haven't even planted them yet. And the last row, here is weeds, which I haven't dealt with yet. And um, the uh, triloba, is that? I gotta look that up too. The perennial black-eyed Susan that has really tiny little flowers. They're so cute in bouquets. Yeah, so those are some of my perennials. Um, I, do, I do love them because they, they add some variety to the season when I can't always get the hotter summer annuals blooming yet. And I'm still looking forward to experimenting with more to see what grows in my dirt, um, what I can manage, what, I, what, what holds up well in a bouquet. Um, but yeah, I am finding they are still, there are a lot of work. Some people are like plant perennials because they're, you just plant them and you're kind of done. But for me, I have high weed pressure in my bed, um, in my field. And so I find the weeding to maintain them is hard. Um, once they, they fill out, it, that's a little bit easier, but then, then they sometimes need dividing, and that's a lot of work too, which I found with the ladies' mantle this year. But I think as my soil gets better, that should um, help as well. Um, so I had to clean up the weeds from the perennial bed, and we have a few more uh, rows to weed, and then we almost should be starting again on some of the newer perennials because the smaller weeds are starting to pop up. And yet, yeah, our other goal um, this week was to get the Lysianthus weeded. We're not quite done. That was something I wanted to finish this morning and it's a little bit mucky out here. So that's okay, I'll, I'll finish it um, another day. Um, but it was really nice having my girls help me. Um, they also, we've been mulching the zinnias. My son cuts lawns for a living and he brings me his grass clippings. Um, so we use that to mulch. Uh, I trialed it on some of my zinnias and it works great. I wish I had mulch for all my perennials and um, all my zinnias and just figure out still what plants will thrive in mulch and what won't. Um, I did get those red peonies to market. The market weather was fantastic. Oh my goodness. I would love market weather like that every uh, week this summer. Um, and yeah, I just had these uh, red peony bouquets uh, with very simple feverfew and mint and very popular. Everyone scooped them up. So that was uh, that was uh, great. And then I had sunflowers, feverfew and some mixed bouquets as well at market. So good market week. OK, I think I need to wrap this up because uh, the wind is picking up. I think the next rain clouds are uh, well starting to spit already. Um, so thanks. Thanks for hanging out with me again. Um, 
coming along on my little garden tour and I uh, hope to see you again next time. If I had a ball.